my dad will now go and touch and there was no hiding it anymore if my mom can't believe me who is my teacher welcome to toast with Hime. i am Hime. today we are going to toast to family all right so we are toasting with coca-cola the original taste it's a regular on this show <laughs> <laughs> please coca-cola whoever is watching a pr please sponsor your girl a whole box you know a whole year supply mm -hmm. so yeah anyways let's get into this thing to family you know how we do it here right before you start watching okay get your drink honey because it's about to go down Ooh. your girl was almost hydrated almost dehydrated N not hydrated dehydrated english english me and english mm -mm. so we are diving into this i hate men my dad made me hate men so we're just gonna start the story i'm not naming anybody because there is honestly no need for me to name because the story is about just my mom my dad and my siblings so yeah anyways as you can see by the title this is a story by anonymous guys if you have a story that you would love me to tell please send it to my email i will just put my email address here herero in uk at gmail.com and i'll also link it in the description below you are more than welcome to send me your story and i'm going to tell it like it's my own so i'm not going to mention your name the only thing is i'll just put there by anonymous all right so this story is actually a very 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 sad kind of emotional kind of yeah so i'm going to start with uh, a little bit of a background story my family was the perfect family the like the family that everybody wishes to have my parents were a married couple with their two kids okay so a boy and a girl perfect family once you put the picture there mm, I was the elder one my 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 brother was younger than me so guys it, it just picture perfect we had a nice house a three bedroom house so the main room was for my parents and then the other one was my brother's room and my room then there's a living room or a lounge as some of you may refer to it and then a kitchen a dining area a garage we had two cars a small car and a big car for when we are going to the village guys just perfect we were schooling at a private school so my either my mom or dad one of them will drop us so usually within town uh, we lived in venduk so or we still live in venduk now at this time that i'm telling this story i am now 27 years old i'm single and uh, you know i'm not ready to mingle i'm not ready for relationship i don't want relationship and my dad made me to be like that now here's the story First of all, I want to say I appreciate my parents a lot. Okay? They put me through private school from day one to until I finished my grade 12 and they paid for my varsity because I couldn't get a scholarship or I couldn't qualify for in the first two years I could not qualify for a government loan. So my parents had to pay out of their pockets, all right? So I'm really really grateful and I appreciate what they have done for me. All right, now not everything that glitters is gold guys please know that not everything that you see shining and glittering is gold you need to get closer to that to see even the sun shines okay it glitters but you can get deep into it you're going to burn all right so that is my situation right here now everybody loved my family like my mom and dad like the perfect the perfect couple so whenever we go for Weddings, okay, I am a Herero, by the way. So you know Herero people will always attend weddings and funeral. And when we are going for weddings, we have our tent, a very big tent, where my brother and I will sleep in one section of the tent and my both my parents will sleep in the other. We had a nice car, a big one, when it's time for us to go to the village. We had it all, okay? We had it all. It was all perfect in the eyes of somebody watching from the other side. But now for me who was in this family, a member of this family, this is what I had to endure. First of all, my mom is very kind and loving, but my mom trusts and loves my dad to the core. Not any of us, her children, can come between 
her husband and herself all right nothing you say is against my dad works nothing my dad is the perfect man in this world that's according to my mom when i was 10 years old i i'm actually uh, i've developed very fast compared to other girls so i started developing hormones faster than other girls at the age of 10 i was in grade five i should believe uh yeah i was in grade five now at this stage already my boobs were starting those hard hard things so my mom noticed my dad noticed as well i was getting a little bit hormonal like hormones were starting and stuff like that but you know like i was still a child i was still a kid you know i would still go play outside you know and stuff like that but we were not allowed to leave the yard that's one thing we only used to play within the yard so whatever we play we had our toys and everything so if i have to play i just play inside and the only time i meet my friends is at school i was never allowed to go for sleepovers i was never allowed to bring friends over or go over to my friends i meet my friends in school at school and that is it and it's my dad's rule my mom complied with this and of course i i love her for that because you respect her husband you know it's her husband's choice so yeah but anyways so I never really had anybody to share whatever it is that I was going through except for in at school, you know, like you can't be sitting there talking about problems, you're just a child. In 11, I turned 11, they were now getting a little bit bigger and everything. Now my dad, my dad was now making compliments because my mom was actually always knocking off uh, at 5 which is and then she will get home because of the traffic and everything she'll get home around six now my dad used to work in the bank so my dad will always knock off either early or later sometimes he used to come at home at home at 4 p.m and then sometimes he will come at seven you know sometimes too early sometimes too late so on days that he comes early but they never used to come at the same time okay on days that he would come and he would pick me from school my brother is always uh, my brother used to stay at the preschool at that time so at the preschool then my brother will stay until five that is because they paid for him to stay until five so he can only be picked after that you understand so my dad will pick me and then it's just my dad and i at home we never had a domestic worker so because i mean we didn't need any my mom used to do all the cleaning and cooking and yeah the two of us my brother and i would go to school so when my dad would pick me up he would let my mom know no i went to pick up the girl you know okay fine because obviously my mom will not think anything i mean it's her husband she trusts the husband and again this is my biological father we are talking about yes now my dad then started touching me you know he started touching me and in awkward places you know it's your dad and he's now squeezing he was squeezing my breast and then i told him papa because i used to call him papa i said papa the the breasts hurt you know like even when i touch them myself they hurt then he said no it always starts like that don't worry the pain will go and then my dad will now go and touch and ask me if i've uh developed any pubic hair then he and i told him what is that even though i knew what it was but in, it was just too awkward for me to sit there and talk about this you know how it is i was not comfortable of of course if my mom would have asked it something else i wasn't comfortable talking about it with my dad but then i just told him no i don't know what that is and then my dad was like oh no let me check that was the first day and then i was like no papa i don't want and then he, was, he touched me he went down and touched me and then he told me no you shouldn't tell your mom about this because i'm you know i'm the one who provides for this house i'm the one who bought this house i'm the one who who's paying for everything i'm paying for your schools i'm buying food here i'm doing everything you know oh guys yeah then I, as a child for me then i just believed him because obviously i know he's the main provider in the house so i believed him and i decided to just keep it to myself and I, knowing my mom, my mom would even kill me for saying that about her husband because my mom would never listen to anyone telling her about her husband. Anyone, it doesn't matter who you are, never. My, my dad is just like this holy person in front of my mom. So fine then, I just kept quiet. Um, a couple of days, you know, passed in between and then my dad would pick me up, come home again. Again, he would 
sometimes squeeze my butt in a very uncomfortable way i'm like papa you are hating me you know that is very fun and everything for an elderly person because at that stage they they know what they're doing and they they are like ready for those kind of actions but then oh I, I was still small you know I was still small and stuff like that and I didn't really know all these things and then he would squeeze me and besides he's my dad guys he's my dad like why would he do that anyways I started just making these touching touching uncomfortable places and then I decided let me tell my mom he didn't do anything yet let me tell my mom I told my mom I was like mommy um connect my mom connect with mommy Pratt then mommy said yeah it's all right I was going to but then we went to the room and then I told mommy, uh, well, mommy Salni, quite, yes, I hope mommy is not going to be angry with me, but then I'm just going to tell mommy what is what has been happening. Papa has been touching me like this and that and that. Woo! That's my mommy quite me. Oh, my mom was so, so, so angry, guys. My mom was angry to the core. Like, I've never seen her so furious. Why would you even think about such things? Why would you say such things about your dad? Who sent you to say those things? That's I tell you about friends and what, 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 and what, what, what. Oh, my mom. I knew how, I knew, I knew it that like, because I knew nobody can go through my mom. Like when it comes to her husband, nobody, nothing, nothing, not even the wind comes between the two of them. So then I was like, ah, I was just there crying, you know, I knew my mom won't believe me. At the end of the day, she also just confirmed that, but I knew, but then it was worth the try from my side. You know, looking back now as an adult, I always say it was worth it for me to say it so that at least my mom knows if one day anything happens. She knew I told her. She told me never talk about such things and whatnot and whatnot. I said, okay, fine. Sorry, mama. Yeah, you lied. You are a liar. You are totally she labeled me liar and everything. And I say, I'm sorry, Mama. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My dad that time was in the other room, you know, and he could hear all this screaming and shouting. Anyways, he didn't come, and then I was just crying there. I cried myself to sleep. Fine. In the morning, I knew it that now I'm in big, big trouble again when it comes to my dad because he told me not to tell a soul, and I told my mom, and I wasn't supposed to, you know. All that so then fine um couple of days passed and then again one of those days that my dad knocks off early so he came home he went to pick me up at school he asked me what is it that you want like you want anything i told my dad no i'm fine and at that time i was now very scared i thought he was going to beat me or something so we got home he locked the gate he locked the house we got inside the room the the, the lounge my father started kissing me like kissing me he started kissing me like kissing everywhere and everything i was just like what what is going on what is going on he started going on and going down and everything he kissed me he kissed me all over all over and then he undressed himself and he raped me i was bleeding it was my first time i was crying i was just 11. okay I went to my room I know my mom she won't believe me and we never used to go anywhere like my mom and dad never used to leave us with any auntie or any uncle or anything in that line it was just the four of us all the time I was miserable guys I was miserable I was crying and everything anyways I showered my mom my dad told me I need to get ready like shower dress up and get into my job my pajamas actually i need to shower and get into my pajamas before my mom arrives he gave me a pad because i was bleeding he gave me one of my mom's pad I, he put it for me on the on the paint because i also didn't know how to put it so he put it on and then i was just the quiet and obviously with all the discomfort and i couldn't walk properly with the pad and the fact that something has you know gone down there and all those things so i just told my mom i'm feeling sick so i'm going to sleep so i slept i didn't have my dinner that day i slept i just cried myself to sleep i was like what is this what is this nobody will believe me like no one like no one would ever ever believe me if my mom can't believe me who will ever believe me you know so that's what was going through my mind and i was like it, there's no point for me to even tell anyone not even my teacher i mean if my mom can't believe me who is my teacher and the fact that you know, my, my dad just used to touch me and everything before I told my mom. And then my mom, 
screamed and shouted at me and then it went it escalated now imagine if i have to open now to somebody else what else is my dad going to do so that is what was going on in me as an 11 year old girl so at the end of the day i just let it go under the carpet but then now these things started happening repeatedly i actually ended up now falling in love with my dad like in because now i like this whole thing went on until i turned 15. so when i went in high school i was just i was not interested in any other men than my dad you know so and he would buy for me whatever i asked for my mom knew that i was my dad's favorite child and all these things you know we would go for trips with my dad i turned 16. I was still dating him uh, basically now at that stage i wouldn't call it rape or anything i was just dating him basically dating him when i turned 17 i got pregnant yes i got pregnant from my dad so when i got pregnant my dad made everything possible for me to get rid of the child my dad bought some tablets okay so he bought some pills on on facebook because on this specific day we were there together he was telling me no i know of pills that they sell on on facebook and then you take these pills and and um, the child is going to go you're like you don't need to have a child now you are too young and stuff like that and i was like I, what if it's the only child that i might have you know what if i will never have kids then it's like no you can't have a child with me like what will people say i said oh but we are already dating what are people saying no people know that we are father and daughter it was all over facebook us taking pictures it's me and him it's daddy's girl it's daddy's girl but it was daddy's girl you know then my dad ordered these tablets they arrived so now these tablets were two one i had to drink orally and the other one i had to insert so i did that in the evening okay when they went to bed and then i did that because it was small like maybe two months i think or a month when i found out i didn't know exactly when because i actually just didn't know <laughs> so then i took these tablets at night i took one and put one in because i just thought like when it comes out it won't really like it might hurt because the lady said it hurt but you know it might be just like period pains like she explained but a little bit worse than period pains oh guys it's not it's not a little bit worse than period pain it is worse extremely worse like i fell off the bed i was crying i was screaming my mom came there was no hiding it anymore there was no hiding it i was just there my dad didn't come like he didn't come it was girls stuff so he couldn't come my dear i was like mama you need to take me to the hospital i'm dying i was bleeding it was a pool of blood everywhere then my mom decided to rush me to the hospital my dad was my dad imagine daddy's favorite girl being rushed to the hospital my dad is not coming it it couldn't click with my mom like it couldn't click with her my dad decided no i will stay with the boy so he had to remain behind at home with the boy with my sibling with my brother so and then my mom rushed me to the hospital we went when we reached the hospital um this is not the private hospital because obviously my parents had the medical aids and everything so when we reached the hospital immediately i was rushed onto the bed and oof, the thing came out so they they didn't do much investigation you know in namibia abortion is illegal and all that so but then now it came out and then they were like no it's a it's a miscarriage and everything my mom was like what miscarriage were you pregnant do you have a boyfriend because like when do you meet this boy do you meet at school i said no i don't have a boyfriend <laughs> guys i told myself i'm not going to tell her anything because at the end of the day she won't believe me she didn't believe me the first time what is going to change today so i didn't tell her anything to this day she doesn't even know so she kept on asking who made you pregnant is it at school i said i don't have a boyfriend at school i don't have i don't go anywhere i don't even do sports i because my parents didn't want me to do sports you know didn't want me to meet people my dad never wanted me to meet people so where would i meet a boy you know i never i don't have a boyfriend i don't know how i got pregnant 
So then my mom just kept on asking, but then at that time she didn't want to stress me because obviously I was in pain and everything. So I slept in the hospital. Then the next day they discharged me. And then when I got home now, my, my mom was, now she started taking care of me. She put in on, she put in leave to remain at home with me for a week, you know, so she took care of me and stuff. And then she kept on asking, no, you, you are free to tell me, you know, that was a miscarriage, you know, maybe because you were hiding and you were stressed and stuff. So obviously now you see what it caused. So please be open with me. What, 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 what? I told her, mommy, I don't have a boyfriend. I've never done the do. I do not have a boyfriend. So period. And that's how I just kept on telling her. She kept on asking, you know, I told her this is the same story. I don't have a boyfriend, you know, because I mean, believe in your kids, guys. When they tell you something in the beginning, just believe in them because you are the first person that they are supposed to trust. And if you do not really accept what the child is telling you, then you are break, breaking that trust so when the child goes through deeper things they will never tell you if you have reached this part of the video please do not forget to hit that subscribe button turn on the notification bell so that you are notified every time i upload new content until next time mwah.